Uh, what a lad. Well, today I'm lucky enough to be joined by one of the all-time great midfielders. He's a Canterbury rugby legend who has won seven MPC titles. He's also managed to rack up 152 Super Rugby games with the Mighty Crusaders, winning three titles along the way. He's also won five rugby championships with the All Blacks and has just recently returned from Japan, having won the top league with the Kubota Spears. He is a true winner. And off the field, he's the ultimate lad, a man who everyone speaks extremely highly of for good reason. He is, of course, the lad, the legend, Ryan Crotty. Welcome, mate. Huge one. Thanks, Jimmy. <laughs> that wasn't. That, um, com- that intro was almost too far away for me to read, so I was, I was really <laughs> squinting to read it. But, mate, we got through there, and, mate, what, a, what an honour to have you on the podcast. Oh, thanks for having me on. I was uh, I was waiting for the call up and yeah that's the only reason I came and helped train because I thought <laughs> I might get a chance to jump on so mate it has worked out so well having you come train mate how how's it been coming back in um, an ex Crusader legend future Hall of Famer I believe coming back in and just chucking the boots on and having a run around mate awesome so good to just see the boys mm. and kind of yeah mainly just to see everyone but also like I guess the last few years overseas you kind of you kind of forget how good it is and you, you kind of, I guess you, you talked about Kubota, like so much of that environment, you're like, oh, the, the Crusaders would do this and mm. the ABs would do this and you kind of, it's nice to see how justified that is because it is so, so good in here mm. and and as well just so good to see the boys, like so, like so many good connections and friendships, you know, forged over heaps and heaps of games, so and to reconnect with those guys and just, just come in and be in a changing room again is, mm. is awesome. Mate, you must have some good memories in that changing room. Oh, so good. A lot cleaner without Israel Dagg in there. <laughs> Way tidier. But, um, yeah, just oh, locker room chat. How good. Yeah. And you mentioned Kubota. You've been over in Japan. Has it been five years you've been over there? Yeah, I went after 2019. So, yeah, four seasons over True. there. Yeah, man. Goes quick, eh? Yeah. Yeah, real fast. But so good to be home. Mm-hmm. You're just going winter to winter. I'd probably glow in the dark at the moment, but <laughs> nice to be back for another Christchurch winter. <laughs> and how did you find it over there? Oh, awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, like, so cool. So much to love about Japan and, and the people and the culture and stuff. And and the footy can be frustrating at times, but mm. it's still just, it's awesome. It was a great opportunity to get over there and experience something new. And, um, yeah, I, I loved it. I really, really enjoyed it. And went out on a winning note. Mate, Kubota, Kubota Spears winning the competition. Bet you wouldn't have thought that was going to be possible when you signed, or did you? Oh, I knew it would be tough. It was real. It was real, like um, some big learnings. Mm. Like, yeah, like we were kind of on. They were on the right trajectory when a few of us kind of got there. And um, probably credit to everyone there. They like a Japanese group with a really open mindset to growth and able to take learnings from here and try and apply them mm. with, with that environment was was we're really lucky because a lot of teams aren't yeah, quite unique. like that yeah yeah <laughs> so we it was, it was awesome and we had a great group um i thought each year we got a little bit better i mm. think we started that first year we we're kind of mid table then we finished fourth and third and then we made the final and started beating teams that we'd never beaten before and mm. and i think that group just really believed and we had a really awesome culture by that kind of fourth year there it was really kind of it was a really great group, really special kind of mm. cool environment, and um, I think I think culture is the most important part of it. You know, any rugby team, and we got that right, and I think that um, that helped us get the get the get the win in the end. So it was pretty cool. Was Did cool. you have the same foreigners for the sort of four year period? Yeah, like me, myself, Foley got there at the same time, as well as a guy David Ballbring and Fadanui Hadawera was there as well, and we had a really good group, and then. Oh, like Ron Bolto, so we were pretty kind of Safa dominated because yeah. Safa coach and he was a good rooster. And then um, Malcolm Marks came in and he's basically a whole front row in Japan, <laughs> so our scrum started dominating. And um, yeah, and it just everyone just got along really well. A lot yeah. of golf, you know, a few beers every now and then. Like Lo- loving the drain. Oh, love a f- love a love a feed out. Like yeah, lots of good <laughs> spots and take care. So yeah, it was. Um, it was, a, it was a great four years and cool way to finish up. Yeah, and I guess a lot of players who go over there always get frustrated that, um, especially of your calibre, that they don't have much say on the rugby or, um, you know, they, they have these ideas but they always just get brushed down or you can't get them across the line. But sounds like you 
had a little bit more say than most. Yeah, we were, like you talk to guys at other teams, mm. and, and you can kind of you have the same kind of conversation. Everyone's kind of facing the same yeah. kind of kind of challenges, and so like yeah, talking to like I think Ben Fennell, for example, he was over there and he's trying to do some stuff defensively that had worked back here, and then I just remember his frustration at not being able to you know get any headway yeah. with um, introducing that. So it made me feel like really grateful that the we had the opportunity to be able to give because mm. to be able to give is you know a massive part of just being happy mm. like you know being able to give and help and that was it was really kind of rewarding and then you got Bernard doing a lot of attack stuff and um, Malcolm helping out and, and everyone just having input and then once you got a kind of team that's been driven by the players and mm. everyone's like right on board and everyone's so invested so it was um it was cool and it was cool to see how much it means to guys that are kind of it's a it's different, eh? Mm. Um, Japanese rugby, like a company, is you're, you're kind of a, yeah, I guess a marketing tool for the company. Yeah, it's quite it's quite strange. But those guys will be Kubota for life. They'll they'll go to the factory and work, and then come to training, and you you see them turn up in their o- overalls, and you're like, <laughs> that's what. Are you? So your players were still working during season. Some of them, yeah, we I think we had about that's crazy. Yeah, forty yeah, percent were pro, and oh, then the yeah. rest were yeah. all workers. So they'll go to the Tokyo office, and yeah. some of them are in sales. Some of them are literally we train on like a factory. There's like a rugby field in the middle of like True. where they do it. Yeah, so oh, right. like tractors driving past, and <laughs> all sorts. So um, yeah, it was it was it was different, different experience. Yeah, and so was it your decision to finish there, or how how did it all end up? Had you had enough? Yeah, it just got a bit like, um, so we've got Madison, who's just turned one, and my other daughter, Grace, who's two and a half. So it was just, my wife, Terry, she didn't come back this oh, season, yeah. just with two young ones. It was just a little bit hard, the mm-hmm. language, and, and the travel back and forth. So she was more comfortable staying in, in Christchurch, where we've got both our parents and support. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, and they're just kind of at that age now. It's just too hard mm-hmm. to be away. Mm-hmm. Um, so... Yeah, it was definitely definitely keen to back, get back home and um, spend more time changing nappies and mm. getting up early. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder you're eating out every night over there. <laughs> you yeah. can't cook to save yourself. <laughs> oh, I oh know. So it's heat them up ramens or um, those two minute rices go pretty good as well. But yeah, well, you kind of do. That. Otherwise, you're just so lonely. Yeah, you know. It's like, yeah. So I was pretty lucky. We had we a good group of lads always to kind of connect with, and so you don't spend. Too much time, yeah. you know, yeah, on your own. Well, literally, when you go to the supermarket and you get all the ingredients to go home and cook something, it's <laughs> more admin, more cost probably than even just j- jumping down the road to a wee ramen joint. Mate, that's what I told myself. That's why that's <laughs> I convinced myself not to cook it. Oh, cheaper to get, you know, go out for feed than, than to cook it up yourself. And then you've got to do the dishes as well, so. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the plan now? You've um, what, have, what have you come into? Mate, I'm just literally hardly thought about it, eh? Was, Free agent. Yeah, I was just kind of, oh, there's a bit up in the air, but I kind of just thought, oh, hey, like if I just focus on doing the best job I can for Kubota and fully mm. investing here, then whatever happens, happens. And I'm going home to be with the girls, and that's that's the mo- most important thing. So that's kind of what's happened. And then I found myself day two walking down for a coffee um, just around the corner and I see you drive past, and next thing you know, the phone. <laughs> hey, mate, you want to come in and hold a pad for it? <laughs> so, and I was, and I was literally, it's was, it was quite weird. Like you kind of your whole career, you're like, oh, you just kind of want to be, you know, like kind of do th- do whatever you want. And yeah. then you get it, and you're like, wow, this is strange. <laughs> yeah. This is strange. like, and then you too much. Yeah, yeah. So it was, it was, it was a real blessing to. I was stoked you you reached out, and I was. Yeah, I was thinking I was in pretty much straight away. And yeah, mate, you, yeah. you, you was the fastest response. <laughs> <laughs> like you literally ran straight to training from that message. I'm like, geez, that was quick. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's oh, you just I love it. I've been part of a team. Yeah, love, like you know, love um, that that side of rugby. You know, the friendships and the connections mm. and mm. things like that. So. Yeah, I guess I'm just waiting to see what happens. Yeah. Um, Definitely not ready to retire then. No, no you've got the, plenty more to give. Your body's in good nick. Yeah, it's hanging. Japan was was different. Yeah, you know, it's a lot. I guess they train as hard as the games. Mm. That's the thing. Mm. You got to kind of, if you can be smart around your training load. The, the games don't take a. They're fast, but they're not as physical as they are in New Zealand by yeah. any stretch. So, yeah. that's the kind. It was a real positive, and yeah, body held up, held up well, and 
you do, you do miss, you miss how good like the physios and you see the guys mm. getting managed here. And you yeah. see that's like, that's the gold standard. You, yeah. you don't like, got to Japan and from being really well managed here and it's like, hey, look, training twice on a Tuesday, twice on a Thursday, full <laughs> contact. You're like, <laughs> are you sure <laughs> so it's kind of was like it was a bit of wake up call yeah. from that I um, remember getting my um, ankle strap for the first time over in Japan oh, I, yeah. and I rolled it twice with the strapping <laughs> I was like oh, this is a waste of time mate <laughs> absolute debacle oh mate I can see how that would happen 100% <laughs> oh no so what's the sort of dream like what What would you love to what would you love your next step to be oh man I, I just I haven't really thought, thought about, about it that no. much eh? like yeah, oh, and just just uh, literally just taking it one day at a time. Yeah, like t- talking to my manager and seeing like what opportunities are there, mm. which is which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, man, just 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 spending time with the girls. Yeah, like, li- like and it's and it's kind of it's almost been okay with not having a plan, mm. but being okay like just to to take your time and and choose and speak to her and what she what we think's best for our family next. So. Mm. It's nice. It's, it's, it's I guess that's the kind of struggle. Mm. Like, well, not struggle, just being okay with, like, not having a plan. Yeah. Like, so that's um, that's pretty hard for a yellow dot, as, uh, <laughs> as you know. <laughs> so, would you take them overseas? Would you take move the family? Would they be open to moving, or ideally somewhere here or yeah, uh, in New Zealand? Well, ideally something here in yeah. New Zealand. Like, it's been you've been away for four years. Like, home's so good. Mm. So. Yeah, ideally, but then uh, if if Terry was open to to going somewhere overseas, and we'd we'd look at that as well. So, mm. yeah, what, whatever we do, as long as it's together, then that's the main thing. Mate, that's it, mate. That's a plan. Exciting times ahead. Looking forward to seeing where you go. It could be the red and black. Who knows? That would be very cool. But I am interested in hearing the story from the start. My first memory of you was obviously Shirley Boys. I'd heard massive raps about the future All Black, starting at ten. I was playing 10 that day and I remember thinking, oh, mate, this this guy is going to be good. And gee whiz, you were good. But I am keen to hear it before that. So going back, I think you were born in Nelson, weren't you? I mean, I was, one of Nelson's finest. Yeah, I was born in Nelson. Mum and Dad used to live up there. Me, me and my brother were born um, up in Nelson. So, yeah, yeah that's, she's Kia Street. I think that's in Stoke. K- Kia Street? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Right down the road. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, born there and then moved to Crosshitch when I was, I don't know, when I was... Two or three. My oh dad yeah, came up, uh, came down the road, and um, yeah, did my trade out at Brighton. Started there with uh, when I was five years old with old Art or Fonz. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mate, were you two on the same five year old team? Yeah, yeah. We played pretty much from when we were five straight right through to when we were about thirteen. Oh wow, yeah. So that was pretty cool. So yeah, we lived out at that out on the east side, and yeah. So he came through the Brighton ranks and. Yeah, went off to Shirley and then went back to Brighton afterwards. But of course, you remember the the Shirley Nelson games because we never used to beat you. <laughs> oh, really nah, mate, there was that one semi final that I do. Oh. <laughs> you guys were oh. hot favourites. It still hurts, <laughs> it, honestly. Like we'll get together and we'll still talk about that game. <laughs> Can't believe. Oh, we had a gun. That was like two thousand and five, eh? Yeah. Man, we had a good team, mate. Yeah, you did. Far out, and then you we and just funny. we were in the midfield or ten, twelve, or something. Yeah, Sita Manasar, was it? Yeah. yeah, he was unreal, eh? Mm. He was so good. Yeah, we had a we were in, had a real kind of sweet spot that year. The guys kind of played the year before, and but we, mate, we just lost the boys high on full time. Oh, at yeah. one point, it was the only game we lost, and then and we had you guys in the semi and far out. Like you guys just got us. It was oh. It's the, it like still hurts. It, <laughs> I can see it. We got yeah. pumped by Crushers boys in the final <laughs> anyway. Fifty <laughs> points. They were stacked. They, they were so stacked, stacked eh? Yeah. And they'll, they'll, they'll still tell you about it how stacked they were. <laughs> yeah. Just catch up with Slady or Tony, <laughs> and they'll, they'll let you know. <laughs> oh, but good time. Like how good is school rugby? Eh? Yeah. Fifteen rugby. Like, um, it's probably the, as close as you kind of get to professional rugby. Eh? Like, mm-hmm. just kind of being with your mates all day, and then you go to training, and then you play games. Kind of. Mm. It's pretty cool, kind of. Kind oh, of, it's, it's just a really cool time when you when you're playing footy, eh? Just, mm. just with your mates and doing what you love. When did you know you were you were going to be good at footy? Like, what age did you realise that you were pretty gifted at it? Oh, I don't know. I was I was always really competitive growing up. Yeah, like really competitive. I remember telling. I think I might have been at primary school, so I, I don't know how old I was, but I remember telling my mate's mum that I was going to be an All Black oh, one yeah. day. I just 
I don't know. I, I she can... must have told me before he played you. <laughs> 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 I remember she laughed. I remember she like, just cracked up at me. Oh, I yeah. was like, oh, yeah. So I don't know how to take that. I was just like primary school. But oh, I guess I always dreamed of, of being one. Um, oh, that's crazy. Yeah. 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 And just, oh, I had so much support coming right up. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I remember when I was young, I was like, oh, I want to be an all back one day. And, yeah. And you, were you good, like, from a young age? Um, oh, when, when are, like, you make, like, you, I guess you judge it by making rep teams mm -hmm. and stuff like that, eh, when you're younger. And me and Fonzie were, were, were in those a lot together. Yeah. Like, under, Jeez, you remember some of the guys like we were Michael Leach one year. Oh yeah. Slady, uh, Fonny. Oh, there was some a lot you could look back at the old photos, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. like age group footy and um Yeah, like came, came through the gates. Dicko, Ash Dixon. Oh, like, yeah. yeah, like so kinda we, we all kinda we were all the same age, so we kinda came through the, the ranks down down here together and yeah, kinda I guess the yeah, I feel like <laughs> don't want to sound arrogant, but like you knew. Yeah, I've always believed. Always believed I could. If, if you work hard enough, you can. Anyone can mm. can do it. So was it always rugby? Was that the main sport for you? No, I played heaps of sports Did growing you? up. Yeah, mum and dad were awesome. Though. I think they were like, if he's playing sport, he's not getting in the shit. Yeah, you know, like so they were always like athletics. Or mum's dad was a really good swimmer. So and she always kind of pushed me and my brother and sister kind of into swimming. And oh yeah. This is not a bad idea living in NZ, but um, no, it was too much hard. Like once it got to like five AM starts, <laughs> I was like, nah. So yeah, like swimming, volleyball, basketball, um, like athletics. True. Yeah, just like everything. Just yeah. like get into it. Like <laughs> no good for mum and dad. Like driving us all around town to <laughs> yeah. trains like nonstop. But yeah, yeah I think they will kind of help with with whatever kind of way you want to go. If it mm. is rugby, I, I think like your basketball skills are applicable to to playing rugby and your yeah, athletic certainly doesn't hurt it. So mm. things like that. And but yeah, it was definitely like mum and dad always if they're if they're training or, or you know, playing sport then they're not getting into shit. So mm. I think that was why. So your pathway out of school, um, I remember you making the New Zealand nineteens, twenties. Yeah. Um, they were pretty stacked teams too. Yeah, it's pretty cool when you kinda because we were always at the trials for those together, yeah, right? yeah. Like, and you know. I had the pleasure of having your comms outside me one game, and I thought, <laughs> oh, mate, this if I'm not going to make the team with Crotty outside me, I'm no chance. <laughs> I didn't make it, but <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, no, yeah, like, so you yeah, played a high school, um, and then schools, you said, oh, that, that, that New Zealand 17s camp. At um, Palmy, so it was the kind of first kind of taste of it, and yeah. kind of, and that's when they, I remember they were stacked with tens, like they had like Trent, DK, um, man, they were just stacked. So like, oh, you can go to twelve. Oh, I was yeah. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're not gonna argue with anyone yeah, there. Yeah. So it's like, and then just kind of ever since then, like seventeens, and then that was when I went back to must have gone back to Shirley the year after that, and played in the midfield, and then yeah, schools, nineteens, um, twenties, pretty cool. Cool, um, awesome teams to be mm -hmm. a part of, and um, yeah, and also the the academy and stuff was really good here. Mm. Like the, the kind of, I remember our first year in the academy, and it's like there was a couple of us that were still going to school, and then a couple of guys that had left school, and they used to make us go and train at um, and at the gym in town at like, I think it was like five or six a.m. before before school before yeah. work, and like I don't know if they were actually like looking at the ten you're shifting or like yeah. I reckon they just kind of see if you turn up. Yeah. And you're like, oh, and basically all the guys that would turn up would kind of make it into the academy. And once you kind of got that, that, that kind of, that training base, I found like when you went to, went to first fifteen rugby, you you were kind of a little bit ahead of the guys that weren't kind of doing that sort of training. If mm. that makes sense, mm. so I felt like that was a real, kind of part, of, like a real crucial kind of time. And I guess my footy career is, is where I kind of. Got a, got a wee bit ahead just mm. through kind of working a little bit harder. Mm. So that was pretty cool. And when you made the New Zealand teams, was there um, ever any opportunities to move to another province or was it always Canterbury for you? Yeah, oh man, I was mad. Can't have yeah. growing up. Like I was like, like Andrew Mertens was one of my favourite players growing up. Him, DC, mm. you know, I, I used to be a ball boy. Like, oh yeah. Yeah, so we'd kind of get there before yeah. any of the, right the bees used to play. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, <laughs> Scott Hamilton was playing for the bees. <laughs> and is it? I just remember he was awesome. And uh, we, we'd get there early and we'd like go kick goals and pretend like we were, yeah. you know, playing and stuff. And then so you kind of ball boy both games. And 
get some hot chips between the, you know <laughs> half time and and I don't know it's just I guess stuff like that kind of yeah just kind of I don't know recedes that kind of that dream that you have and ha- what you aspire to aspire to before yeah um, so yeah it was yeah, it was quite funny looking back actually. that's cool you've gone from that like that ball win pretty quickly like it wasn't long out of school that you were then in that Canterbury setup playing in the NPC was it. Man, yeah, it went real quick. I remember I tried to do some study. Everyone's like, oh, you know, it was when they, yeah. you first kind of make it and they're all, and like you're getting all the PDMs say, hey, look, your rugby career is average only three years. And <laughs> yeah. you're like, oh, no. <laughs> like, <laughs> so, you, like, I remember doing some study and, like, um, man, the, the, the tutor, she wasn't really, um, like, didn't really care about rugby. She yeah. was just like, if you miss any more classes, I'm going to fail you kind yeah. of thing. So, and that was, like, pretty much straight out of school. So I was like, Right. I'm trying to, yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but it was it was it was pretty quick. Like, um, yeah, it was pretty much straight out. Um, I think I think that first year of Crusaders, I think Casey broke his arm, mm. so it was like straight in there. Yeah, it was. You, yeah, it was you learning learning on the hop pretty quick. Yeah. Um, but that was, looking back, it was awesome. Like yeah. you're playing against guys. I think when you first come in, like I remember, I remember John Smith. Like I was raced over a rack thinking. Like crap, that's him, <laughs> and then he sees me, and then he just goes bang, head first, bang, like, splits me like Harry Potter. Like I was like, well, welcome to Super Rugby, kind of thing. Like, yeah, just I think you play each week. You're like playing against guys that you've just a year ago you're watching on TV. Like, how how awesome is he? Yeah. Kind of so it's quite a quite like a, you get starstruck. I think that that first kind of season or two that yeah, you're, you're massively. You know. And I'm I'm guessing you're starstruck probably the most in your own side. You guys had a. Oh, you spoke about your idol being Dan Carter, and then next minute you're outside and trying to tell him where where the space is. Mate, it's um, yeah, you. I remember that. I remember we had a real experienced forward pack. Hey, when I first came, like Jacko, um, Fr- Franksy, uh, Brad Thorn, I think was still there. Yeah. Um, oh mate, yeah, that was stacked. McCaw. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you don't even want to call for the ball out of the back. So you're like, oh yeah, you guys take it. But <laughs> yeah, and then you, you like, like you say, I think we had a conversation the other day, and then you're playing out DC, and it's like you don't want to say anything because yeah. oh, you're the best player in the world. Why would I? Why would I make a call? Kind yeah. of thing. So it's quite, um, yeah, it was interesting learning. It was a real kind of, it was cool, like cool couple of years though. But you kind of learn, like I think that was when it still we were old school. That mm. kind of old school real environment was kind of just kind of phasing out. And yeah. But there was the old, you know, take us a cup of tea or, or yeah. clean the boots or... Earn your stripes. Earn yeah, yeah. your stripes. Yeah, stay out the front of the bus, boy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you don't get... You get three seats back. No, 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 no. <laughs> so how did you get over that, um, I guess that, not fear, but um, the ability to give Dan Carter a um, message or um, feed in what you're actually saying? How long did it take you to feel comfortable there? Oh, I think a bit of time. Once mm. you, you kind of been in the saddle a wee bit and you, f- you feel kind of comfortable enough to contribute you know I mm. think yeah it maybe took a season or two mm. like it took a bit but um I don't know cause, like I got quite a real high like respect for authority so mm. if, if I see those guys as like I, I wouldn't challenge like I wouldn't challenge those those guys especially when I was younger mm. so um so you're kind of just just happy to fit in and and do your job and just not kind of <laughs> you just don't step <laughs> out of line um yeah, it took it took a bit of get used into, it. and they kind of helped. They were really good at helping you along as well. As yeah. Like he was a couple of times like, "Cross, I need you to, you know, I need this from you." And he was really good like that too. Yeah. Oh, mate, that's so cool. And talk to me about your sort of Canterbury because you're going Canterbury um, Crusaders, Canterbury Crusaders for a bit, winning titles, um, probably winning the shield, no doubt. What had a few um, memories from those uh, games? What do you remember? Yeah, I always remember Super Rugby was always like the um, it was like the high pressure kind of season. Mm. Like it was always really intense, big physical games. Like, and it was always long, wasn't it? it was, and the travel and stuff. So it was it was a, it was a real it was enjoyable, but it was still a grind and mm. it was still really tough. And then I always remember going back to Canterbury was almost like it, well, it almost had to be, but it was always oh how good mm. like we're gonna play. Running rugby, we're gonna we're gonna attack wide offset piece all the time. We're gonna and we're gonna have fun because it, it kind of had to be to mm. kind of get to decompress from a from a super campaign. And I remember early on, um, Pens was did an unreal job. Like um, 
like coming into Canterbury, especially because he had a really young group. And mm. like, I just remember being fun, like really fun. Um, some of my, you know, fondest memories of of um, you know Canterbury campaigns and some of the stuff he used to do off the field and a lot of the team building stuff. It was it was always really really good. Um, and I think. And I think it was also like a lot of guys that missed out on AB, so yeah, they were disappointed and they needed something fun to come back to, and um, yeah, and, and I think that probably translated into a lot of their positive performances, you know. So yeah, you know, and and also like your mates that you make kind of playing those campaigns because we, we had a core group of us that played a, like a heck of a lot of games together. That mm. you know we were kind of well, the, f- the further on we got, we we um, would not make All Blacks, so we'd all go back to. Um, Canterbury and so we're just playing a lot of lot of like a whole year together and mm. like those kind of friendships and connections were, were really cool and I think they were you know they kind of helped us you know play well too mm. and you mentioned the All Blacks are missing out on the All Blacks when did you start feeling like you were a chance to be an, become an All Black were you disappointed early on with some of the missed selections so I think what was it like four or five years before you became an All Black or did you feel like you weren't ready up until basically you were you were named? I remember having a conversation with Hondo like way back in the day, and I remember him saying like, "Do you, do you think you ever feel ready, like oh, to yeah. go into the ABs? I yeah. don't I don't know if you oh, like I don't know if you would like I I wouldn't like you never felt ready. No, nah, you no, never true. feel like yeah. I remember when I got caught up and it might have been thirteen when, I, when yeah when I had to go over for for that first game and like. I, mean, he, I think it might have been him who said it to me. He's like, oh, did, but would you ever feel ready? Mm. I was like, yeah, it's a, it's a good point. Maybe you wouldn't. Like, so, yeah. He must feel ready now. <laughs> 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 Mate, <laughs> Bolter, you reckon? <laughs> Bolter, he would here first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, I, I, don't know, I was never disappointed. You always hope, you know, you're always, you're always trying, and that's, that's the ultimate goal, isn't it? Yeah. So... But no, I wouldn't say the point. And you, you, you got to look at, you know, missing out as an opportunity for yeah. something else. Yeah. So when you did finally get named, what was that like? Oh, it was unreal. I felt, well, the, my first game was 13 and it was, I think, S- Snakey might have had to go home during the week. I think it, um, I think it might have been maybe his first maybe, child, yeah, maybe, true, I think. Yeah. yeah. Might have been. So anyway, yeah, they were in Sydney. And... um. Mate, Shandy calls, and it was like a Monday or Tuesday. He's like, pack your bags. So were you not in the squad? No, nah, I wasn't in the squad. Oh, wow. Nah, so out of nowhere. Out of, mate, yeah. I, was, I don't know. I can't remember. I was, I was like, you, you're joking. He's like, nah. Because I know he's a family friend. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, good one. <laughs> but, um, mate, yeah, sh- yeah, okay. Like, <laughs> oh, no, I can't make it, Shandy. Like, yeah, yeah, right. So busy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so straight on the blow, mum and dad. Um, yeah, yeah, that was straight on like booking tickets. And I had a couple of mates, like, like um, from from Shirley. Like we got an awesome group of mates, yeah. like really good group of lads that are still really tight. And I had a couple of my best mates that were kind of on OE or living in the UK. Yeah, and they always said, "Oh, we believe we reckon you're going to be an OB one day, and we won't miss your first one." <laughs> <laughs> so I called the buff and that. One of them was in Wales, and I think two of them were in. Well, one was in Wales, one was in Adelaide, and another one might have been in London. Wow. So I rang them. I'd let them know. I was like, "Hey, boys, I'm going to going to Sydney yeah. to, tonight. Like, just letting you know. Like, yeah, no. yeah, yeah. And mate, they all they were all there. Far like, right, that's mate, cool. Yeah, they all flew back, and they were all there. So, um, yeah, Sydney there for the week. Just man, blur. Like, yeah. just like shit scared like <laughs> um yeah and it was um were you starting nah I came nah. off the bench yeah came off the bench and played about i think 30 35 minutes i think off the bench yeah, and, oh awesome yeah so cool like and probably the coolest thing was like catching up with dad after the game mm. giving him a hug and mm. seeing how emotional he was and and also like all the texts you kind of get that week probably the the biggest realization is the kind of the satisfaction that everyone else has on your success because mm. a lot like you don't do it on your own. Yeah, like everyone, everyone who's helped you along the way has, has contributed to, to that moment. Yeah, so that's probably the, the coolest thing. Like seeing the happiness that you know your success can bring other people. Yeah, because they've they've helped you. So that was cool. That is cool, and you obviously went pretty well because then you went to the India tour. Yeah, yeah, went played that game, came back, played 
for Canterbury for the rest of the season and that was good fun. And then, yeah, we played Wellington in the final and then four o'clock the next morning after the final we were at the airport flying out on India tour. So. True. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hell of a celebration. Oh, oh. Still <laughs> half. <laughs> Stumbling onto the plane. <laughs> <laughs> all right, yeah, it was, yeah, it was cool. It was, uh, yeah, like awesome just to get like touring for the ABs, yeah, in the UK, like, oh, unreal, such a cool like rugby experience. Like looking back now, yeah, yeah, when you're when you're there, you, you don't really, you probably don't, towards the end, you are mindful to to like really realize how good it is. But yeah. now looking back, like such a such a cool time, like yeah, touring the UK, oh, unreal. And your first try is probably. Must be one of the most memorable experiences of your career, really. Like that try to beat Ireland in what was it, uh, eighty-three or four minutes? Hell of a comeback, scoring the match winner that Creedon then has to kick. Uh, memory that must um, sit right up there for you. Far out. It's probably I can't be mad at Colsey for being such a grub in every game <laughs> I've ever played him. <laughs> well, he must have punched me in probably two or three rucks at least. <laughs> but I can't be mad at him because he <laughs> didn't, you know, he put that on a plate, didn't he? Um, that was fun. It was, it was cool. It was cool just to kind of feel like you've contributed something to to the team. Yeah. Like, um, but man, I didn't do anything. Like, yeah. you know, I mate, caught a five meters out and <laughs> fell over the line. Like, didn't. And I, I was gassed as because that, that that last phase was just so quick. Yeah. And I remember getting up from a ruck and, and Nick Gill just yelling at me. God's get like he's yeah, screaming yeah. at me to get to the wing. Yeah. So I pull screaming at me to pull with so go go to the wing where you don't have to do anything. Yeah. And then Colsey just here you go, son. Mate. Um but were, were you always confident that you guys were gonna win that game? Or did you Because obviously you hadn't been in the team for that long, but um it was one of those moments where it's like, Wow, that is that is good. Mate, I think like that was a pretty special group that, that mm. kind of two thousand thirteen season. I think kind of just being a new guy going in, like, I remember, I remember the game. I remember when Sexton was taking that kick. Oh yeah, and I remember like if he had a if he had a kick that, there was no way mm. we could have come back. Like looking back, but you, I probably wasn't really conscious of the scoreboard. You kind of just focus and like just really, like really ruthlessly on your task. Yeah, but um, I remember thinking like, I was like even if this goes over, we're still gonna win. Like yeah. that's like, yeah, literally yeah. the feeling that you had. Like. Yeah. And that was probably for quite a sustained period for the ABs, but I just remember having that, that kind of, um, that that thought. Yeah, like, oh, that's all right. We're still confident. So yeah, yeah, I think he's maybe that's the guys around you, and the, yeah, and maybe the this the success that the teams kind of had over a period. But um, I just remember really clearly thinking that, which yeah. was in hindsight <laughs> very wrong. <laughs> we had a kick that we couldn't align. So, um, so your confident Cruds was going to kick that one from the sideline, mate. Yeah. Yeah, he's well, he's kicked enough against us. <laughs> like the Chiefs, are, you know, he's. Um, but we actually we played um we played Santori in the semi final. Yeah, and he was the ten, and they had a mall try that got disallowed in the final minute of the game, and he's going to need a kick from the exact same spot oh, true. to um to to win it for them. Oh, the exact, wow. And I was just like, damn it, this better not be a try because he'll probably ice it. I've seen this yeah. before. Yeah, yeah, deja vu. Oh. But, very different feeling. What about your goal kicking? Did you like you were goal kicking back at school? Would you have wanted that kick from the sideline or? Oh, easy to say yes now. <laughs> easy to yeah, mate. Oh, I don't know, um, mate. Look, literally, like that's probably like what I'd say to young young players. Like, just d don't let that kind of thing, don't give that kind of thing up. Because yeah. I remember when I first came to Canterbury, like I'd have been like seventh choice kicker or something. We were oh, yeah. absolutely stacked. We had yeah. like. Stevie Brett, Slady, Hamish Gard, um, I think Tails might even been there. Mm. There was just heaps and heaps of goal kickers, and they're like, "Oh, well, Crot's your six string." So I was like, oh, "I'll put the T away for it yeah. for the season." Never really like kept it up, yeah. but it was something that I really enjoyed, like the, the kind of challenge of goal kicking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in hindsight, should have should have kept up, but whether I would have wanted to take one against <laughs> Ireland, time up. <laughs> Second or third game. <laughs> yeah. I think it was like fifth game. Fifth oh, game. Four, yeah, maybe if I was lucky. Yeah, nah, probably not. <laughs> probably not. Probably not. <laughs> so after a try like that, do you start feeling more comfortable in the environment or like do you uh, did you feel like you belonged there? Yeah, but probably more so just because of the 
the mates that I had, like the connections I had with, within, like amongst the team by yeah, then. Like you yeah. just have time and you have time to get to know people and, and you know, like I, I remember that tour, I was like spent a lot of time with like um, Bender and Colsey mm. and Tarweta and just got, you know, you, you got your, your group of mates that you, you, then you feel more comfortable kind mm. of in, in amongst it. So, and then you, obviously time on the field, that's a massive part of, you know, feeling like you're part of a team. And mm. um, so, yeah, so yeah, the more time I, s- I spent in the group, the kind of more comfortable. But I don't think you ever really feel comfortable mm. in an AB's environment. I think there's always that, it's just that bit of edge or that bit of the pressure that they like to have in the environment. So, you know, when, when you get to a game, you, you're used to it. So Yeah, and were you like that sort of every All Black announcement, like, Sitting on the edge, uh, not sure if you're in or out. Obviously, you you missed a few. The 2015 World Cup squad. Um, how hard was that one for you to take? Yeah, I don't think you ever. You never take it for granted. Like yeah. me personally, I, I was in and out enough times to know that you just don't like. Mm. And yeah, 2015 was an example of that. Um, it was it was tough. It was tough to take. It mm. was um, yeah, I was gutted. Like um. But then, in, in hindsight, I probably didn't deserve it. Like I wasn't, I wasn't better than Conrad, Ma, Sonny, and Muller was playing really well. So I was like, you know, the only person you'd be frustrated at is yourself because you're not playing good enough and you have complete control over that. So, mm. um, but obviously, yeah, I wanted to be there because all my mates were there and it's the yeah. World Cup and how good. But yeah, it was it was in hindsight, it was probably like one of the best things that happened. Like you, you, I missed out on that, but. Um, like I, I reacted to it really well, which I was, you know, proud of. I came back here for Canterbury and really invested into that group and had one of my most enjoyable and best seasons mm-hmm. and, um, you know, connected really well. And um, and then the next year, and then I was ready to take the opportunity in 2016 and, mm-hmm. and really took it because I was really hungry for it because I missed out. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, frustrating, but in hindsight, you know, you, you learn from setbacks and yeah. I was glad I took that learning. It's tough, eh? Because, like, you mentioned when you got named how happy you are that everyone's, you know, enjoying your success and how ha- how much joy that brings them. And then on the flip side, when you miss out, how much pain it sort of gives them because they think you're in so much pain, but really it's your thinking that they're in pain, you know? It's that weird sort of feeling, eh? Bro, 100%. A hundred percent, yeah. Because you, you, you kind of forget that everyone's on the ride with you, yeah. Like your family and, yeah, you can't, you do forget that because you, you do kind of have to be a wee bit selfish to, you know, in your own world and you're doing everything you need to do to prepare and play and it does get a wee bit like um well you kind of have to be a wee bit I think so, yeah. um yeah and you you do you forget that everyone's on the on the ride with you so yeah, it's it's, it's a, yeah it's funny you mentioned that yeah. Yeah, no, you're spot on. And then, obviously, the following year, you're back in there, um, starting a bit more. You become sort of first choice midfielder. Yeah, it was. It was also. I really like. It was a real strong goal. Like, mm. man, sixteen, seventeen. Well, sixteen was just to kind of establish myself as a as a starting All Black and ho- hold it down for for a whole season. And um, and obviously, the Lions was a pretty big carrot. But mm. yeah, it was just yeah, sixteen was was good. From the learning from the year before, so yeah, it was it was a great season. We really enjoyed it. Um, enjoyed the challenge of like because um, it is it's such a challenge in, in yeah. that environment and in international rugby. So um, that was it was a really memorable year from from like just knuckling down and and working really hard and and getting some reward on the back of that. Because mm, it wasn't sort of just miss selection that you had to deal with. You had a so many injuries throughout your career, particularly concussions, a um, few others as well. But um, it was definitely something throughout your career you you had a tough time with. Yeah, I think they're just part of. They're probably the most frustrating part of the game, eh? Mm. Like injuries, like and like I can get like frustrated, but I'm still probably like really like just grateful for like the career like I've played for I don't even know how many years now like it must be a hundred uh, yeah getting down there so like in the at the in the time at the moment like in that moment of being injured that's like frustrating yeah it's, it's like you can't see the end can yeah. You, like, don't know, yeah but then you come out the other side and you're like oh it wasn't that bad yeah you know so it's, it's quite a it's a funny one but yeah like 
like I'm pretty much an expert on concussions. Anyone that can, <laughs> like they just hit me up, they're like, hey. <laughs> I was like, mate, go to Japan for four years. You'll be right. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, it's, um, oh, it's just part of the game. Yeah. And you see the boys here going through it. Like, mm. you boys been hit pretty hard this season. And, mm. um, yeah, like, it's, like any we set back, you just got to deal with it and as best you can and mm. um, use it as a, a, a challenge, I guess. And I guess that's what I did every time. And I was pretty lucky. I've always had good. Like especially around here, really good care, and mm. especially like you say around the concussions, Doc's great here, and really good physios around that co- kind of thing. So um, I think it's just part of the game. Yeah. yeah. So what did a concussion look like? Like obviously you had, I think was it like six in just over a year? Like it was a pretty um, decent tally. Yeah. Like what what did it look like at its worst for you? Oh, the thing is. The worst part about it was the noise, like the, what everyone says about it and stuff. Like mm. you read about it in the media, that's the worst part of it. Oh yeah, yeah. So like, I guess because I had a, a couple like quite close together, um, like it was, um, I guess it became easier to to get concussed if yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So, um, but then the, like I said, the most frustrating thing was was the media and stuff. But with, with I found with my my ones person I think everyone's different but mm. with my ones I would recover really quickly. Oh, okay. Yeah. So like I did all sorts of stuff. Seen like a neurologist here in Christchurch and um, having cognitive brain function tests done and like I was my uh, my baseline. She was I don't know whether she's trying to make me feel good but she's like <laughs> you're, you're, you're sharp boy. <laughs> you're a genius. <laughs> <laughs> she says, is that Einstein? <laughs> <laughs> I reckon she was just fluffing me so I could go back and she's like <laughs> massive crusader yeah, fan yeah, yeah get him back out there <laughs> oh, she, like, it was awesome like I was really well looked after and that, that's that's half of it yeah. the, the kind of peace of mind and how you actually feel about it um, but no I, man I recovered quick like like genuinely and then um, I think it was mostly like a week or two at a time I just had to mm. take a wee smoko and like let it settle down and, and then I was, I was good to go again. So, Would you have done anything differently? Because you were getting them, you know, like you said, they were becoming easier for you to get concussed. Would you have done anything differently in hindsight looking back or not really? No. I felt, felt good. You yeah, were ready to go. Yeah, felt good. Yeah. Like, um, no, I probably wouldn't mm. because I, I feel like the processes that they have in place around that kind of thing are, yeah. are really good. So if you follow those and they're so mindful of it now, like um, – no, if you, if you just do the right things, and you do, if you do right by you, like, yeah. then you can't really... Well, that's it, eh? Yeah, you got to... Yeah, that's it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And you mentioned the media, I guess. Like, I remember the media, like, they're basically starting a campaign for you to retire after at the, I don't know, the fifth or sixth one. Like, did you yeah. feel any pressure to retire, or did that ever come across your thought process that maybe it was time to give the game up? No, nah, not not really mm. like um no nah, it wasn't like cuz I probably would have known if they were really bad yeah but because they weren't they were like little just 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 do, like little dings i guess if that's a, mm. if that's the way you describe <laughs> a concussion <laughs> um, <laughs> but the thing was i was recovering well like yeah. literally i didn't feel like i was like having, i wasn't ever having headaches i was it was literally like if it was like you get one and you have like a feeling of not feeling quite right mm. And then it would take a few, a couple of days, and then you'd you'd start to come right and, and feel fine again. So it was, and then you'd have to be held out of the next week just because it's you know you're not all right. So um, yeah, so I never, I never really felt like like retirement was a real thing. And then and then like like honestly, four years in Japan, like n- nothing. Yeah. Like was it luck or is it, is the game just less physical there? I, I don't know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's 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 quite funny. How were most of your concussions? What were they caused from? Oh, all sorts of different things. Yeah, like sometimes it's just getting a knee, like a knee at the bottom of a ruck, or yeah. trying to f- trying to bite Jack Goodyear's head. <laughs> um, you know, you're coming off second best of that. <laughs> um, just really in- nothing. Yeah, like really innocuous, like and just different. Nothing. Mm. Sometimes it's making a tackle, and yeah, sometimes it's just carrying the ball. Like yeah, yeah it's interesting. Yeah, eh? it is, yeah, is it has it still been much around it? How's the season like Super Rugby been for that kind of thing? Pretty. I feel like there's been less this year than yeah. ever, really. Yeah. It's everything else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's always something. You have a, oh, mate. You have a year Calves. of Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, so then um, we'll go back to your All Black career and the 2019 World Cup that year. 
Um, that was obviously a massive year for you and um, the All Blacks. So what do you remember about that year and that selection? Yeah, it was it was just, it was awesome to experience the World Cup. Yeah, it was just it was different, eh? It was World Cup. You don't realize how different World Cup rugby is. That there's kind of tournament format, but um, oh, yeah, it was. Oh, it's hard. Like it was frustrating. We didn't win, mm. so it was obviously that that sour taste in your mouth. And um, but like yeah, I just remember it was oh, we prepared really well, and the group was in a pretty good place, and just um, oh, some just really good learnings around that. That week, I remember the All Blacks always, always. I remember Gilbert quite often would talk about like having a really elite performance one week, and then there was always a challenge to back it up again, mm. like stay at that level or, or even go again. Mm. We would quite often kind of, you'd often find it in a, in a bledders like first test, the kind of first game against Aussie, the um, I guess the unknown, yeah, and, and that that kind of fear or uneasiness would. Um, would mean you'd get that really bone deep preparation. Yeah, like you'd yeah. just go over everything, and then you'd get a really good performance. And I don't know whether, I don't know whether the second one was a, I don't, I don't think it's complacency, but there's just not that same. It's not the same. Edge, yeah. So then it would quite often the the, the two performances would, you know, mm. be a little bit different. Mm. So that there was always a kind of thing. So back to back performances. How do you kind of back it up and? Yeah, I don't know. Like, I guess that was maybe a learning in that. Well, not a learning, but we well, didn't quite get it right in that that semi final. So that was it was um, oh, it just it just hurts, I yeah. guess. And you feel for the group and everyone, and mm. yeah, it's just um. But like you say, to go to World Cup was really cool. Mm. Really cool. That was in Japan. Yeah, like, it was awesome. Kind of getting a taste of that before kind of going to live there. Yeah, and it was just a real probably real shame about COVID because on the back of that. On the back of the World Cup, rugby was hissing in Japan. Mm. Like they were really about Didn't it. it eh? Yes, yeah, so they they'll get behind stuff like that. Yeah. They're really oh, awesome supporters. So, um, mate, yeah, it was a real shame that COVID really kind of stunted that momentum. Yeah. yeah. And what what about your um, selection in the semi? You missed selection for that semi. How hard was that for you to take? Did you feel like you you want you you obviously wanted to be out there? Did you feel like you deserved to be out there? You would have made a difference. Oh, hard to say. Yeah. Hard to say. In hindsight, eh? anything you can say, stuff like that. But no, nah, it was it was just gutting. Yeah, gutting to not have the the opportunity. But yeah. um, but that's just the way it goes. Like I, I kind of learned. Like like I've had so many awesome moments. Like you can get hung up on the ones you don't get, or you can just be grateful for the ones that you do. Yeah. It's um. Cool. And man, I've had been so especially with this team and the ABs with Canterbury. Like I've just been so lucky to have that many awesome kind of memories and moments and and mates that um yeah i got more to be grateful for than than to be disappointed yeah. about so yeah. um yeah but I was, I was like i was lucky like i'd been to there as well and we were in the same boat and he'd put he'd be my best mate in the ab's and mm -hmm. we spent a lot of time together and it was cool kind of you know we could be filthy about it but then hey look mate we've got to train we've got to prepare the boys well today and mm -hmm. focus on that and he and he was really good for me with that too so it was um yeah, and you got your send off in the third and fourth against Wales. Yeah, yeah, it was it was a weird one, eh? Yeah. A really strange week that. Like, <laughs> oh, but but like, how do you get up for that? But then you do, you yeah. do. You're like, man, why not? Like, yeah. how good? Like, we're we're playing in a game, another game at the World Cup, and um, you you kind of I remember that week. I more drew from the guys I was playing with. Mm -hmm. Like I was playing with Coles, you playing with Bender, you know, playing with Nagy and. All these guys, Sonny, you know, all these guys you've played, Rito, like all these guys you've just played so much code with throughout your career. And this is the last time you're going to put on the jersey. So mm. draw emotion and use that emotion to fuel your intent kind of through that. So that was, that was, it was a, it was a weird one, but it was a, a moment that you still got to take in. Mm. And my dad, mum and dad there, and Terry was there too. So yeah. Mate, how good. Yeah. And you mentioned all the moments that you're grateful for, like um, some of the, Memories in the Crusaders, All Blacks. What are what are a few that really stand out? Um, like cel like celebrating championships is, are awesome. Yeah, like s seventeen was Got really to do cool. A few of those. Very lucky. Like you, yeah, you seventeen as in Africa, eh? Yeah, man of the match too. Yeah, that you was were, weren't cool. you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what a time! <laughs> you don't miss anything, up. eh? Hey, mate. <laughs> Memory. <laughs> oh man, that was cool. Like that was such a special. 
oh, just when that final who to win, I just can remember the feeling. And, yeah. Oh, mate, the elation, the just the genuine, just the feeling was just unbelievable. Like, because that was like, for a lot of us, it was like 2009, lost the semi, 2000. 10 lost the semi 2011 lost the final was that the Waratahs one 2011 was the Reds oh, lost the oh, final oh that's right 2012 lost the semi 2013 maybe lost the semi 2014 lost the final oh yeah 2015 missed missed playoffs 2016 lost the quarter uh, so it was like you'd had just had like you'd run, eh? oh man don't really remember like people don't really nah. remember the Crusaders going through that patch yeah but then like I guess that's the standard that it is here. Yeah. Like you win finals or you, it's a failure. Mm. Whereas I dare say other teams might be satisfied with making a playoffs. Or, yeah. Whereas I remember us, I just remember it was just the boys are filthy. Mm. Like you lose a quarter final, the boys are just just nothing. Yeah. Like, so I guess to you have that kind of sustain so close, so, so mm. close and never had it. And then it was awesome because there's a group of us in that team that had been there for all of that. Yeah. And you kind of like, but the year, 2008, they won. So the year after, like, oh, we got here and we haven't won anything. Like, <laughs> is it our, is it? <laughs> so I just remember the, the the relief, but also just how hard it was. Yeah. Like how hard that journey had been to, to finally win one and also, like, to do it in SA and mm. at a packed out Alice Park, you know, on the road. No team had ever done it. So that was, that was, that was right up there, man. That was a really cool, that was a really, really cool, cool moment. Um, and then, like, milestone games. Like, I remember my 150th. I remember Ray did an awesome, awesome job at making it special for me. Mm. And so, like, to to kind of reach that was a really cool, cool moment. And, and that pref- was mo- mainly because that performance was a really good performance that week. And, um, yeah, and then, and then just, like, all the all the normal stuff as well, like going on tour with the yeah. lads and just, or just, just like, um, probably the mates, probably your friends, mm. the connections, the genuine friendships that you make they're the kind of they're the moments and memories that you that you remember the best I reckon mm, hey, 100% uh, everyone, is, uh, everyone says it but it, it is it is so true yeah like, the thing everyone remembers yeah the connections the mates those. you don't re- like, you, you kind of remember the game yeah eh? yeah and like you remember, you remember like guys are good players and stuff but you remember if they're a, a good bugger yeah, you know yeah I don't know that's just um yeah, I think that's the cool thing about the game, eh? Yeah. It gives you those opportunities to make those mates and create those kind of memories and stuff. Percent. So then why did you um, decide to go to Japan? Like when You decided that before the World Cup, right? Yeah. Just timing was right, money was good? Yeah, pretty much. Mm. Pretty much. That, that was awesome how that came about, actually. Like I was kind of, I was tossing up between France and oh, yeah. there wasn't a lot in Japan. And I remember, we, I think we played a Bledisloe there. It might have been 18. Yeah. And um, me and Ben were going to go catch up with Soaks, who's like the he was the oh, yeah. he was the Ford's coach yeah, at Kubota. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ben and player, then gone and coached. And I, I had a promo or something, so Ben went and caught up with him. And he's like, "Oh, he's Crotz was actually looking for something over here." And bang! Next day, contract through. Really? Yeah, Jeez. Soaks, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out, Orlando <laughs> Soakai. <laughs> Tom's his mate now. He's, he's off to the Wellington, but um, yeah, he mate, and I was like, and then my agent's like, "Can you fly back to Japan after?" Um, India tour because it was on the way to India tour we played the Bledders like. oh, yeah. and I was like mate I've been here for two weeks like yeah. <laughs> I was like should we give Ben to the commission or <laughs> he's like no 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 <laughs> don't be silly so um, yeah and then it just came about and um, oh great opportunity I just I just felt like it was time like I'd been here for maybe 11 or 12 years by then so mm. Um, and we got we had awesome guys coming through like re, like they do you boys do that well here the kind of succession plan for guys that are kind of transitioning um, out of the Crusaders and having guys just ready to step in so um, and also from the All Blacks as well like mm. it was just just time for me to go it felt right it felt like I'd done everything I I could here and given it as good a crack as I, I could have and um, didn't really feel like I was running away from anything or, yeah whereas if I remember I feel like. If I had gone in the past, I felt like I was kind of maybe running from a challenge or mm. just um, you know that kind of thing. So yeah, yeah kind of just felt right. Felt it was the right time. And so is is that sort of why you stayed here as long as you did, especially in the Crusaders? Like I remember a period when they signed guys like Sonny Bill, and um, you know, obviously you'd earned that starting spot, and then he comes in, and 
you're pushed back down and then how does that make you feel? Do it make you feel like you want to go to another franchise? Um, you are pretty much an all black, so Mate, exactly. It, it, yeah, like um yeah, I just that's a challenge, man. Like mm. like I'm pretty like love Crusaders. Like yeah. I grew up, you know, I always wanted to be one. But like I, I think I remember when Sonny came I, it was just a challenge. Like mm. you just you you can't control what you can't control. So knuckle down and, and do everything you can to try and get it back. And like I ended up playing a ton of club footy that year. Yeah. Um, but that was just the way it went. Like that's, if you're not good, he, he was better than me. So if, if I was better than him, I would have been playing. It's just the reality. Yeah. So that's, you, sometimes you just got to take it on the chin if you're not, if you're not good enough. So I guess that was a bit of that. And then 2015, when I missed out on the World Cup, that was probably the main one where you're getting like decent offers from overseas. And yeah. France and that's the kind of one that you're like oh geez what do mm, I do here mm. but then that was the one like like I hadn't been a consistent all black I hadn't, I hadn't like really tested how hard I can push myself and hadn't had like the the real challenge mm. you know and I wanted that and I felt like if I had gone overseas I'd have been running away from the challenge so that was probably why I didn't didn't really go hey, that's a cool mindset and I, I feel like that's pretty unique these days when, when someone gets you know, when uh, if Sonny Bill came in and ahead of someone, I feel like a lot of guys would sort of drop their lip and want to move to another franchise and sort of prove them right that they, you know, want to go against them. You know, so um, being able to hang in there and um, eventually become a hundred and fifty-two game legend uh, shows shows a lot about you. I appreciate that, man. Yeah, well, like it's. Like you, you define whether whatever situation, whatever decision you make becomes a good one. Yeah, don't you? Like, like you decide that, and then you go about making it a good decision. So, no, that's that's kind of you to say. You, you do have those thoughts. Are you like, oh, oh stuff it. I'll get somewhere <laughs> else. Yeah, you, you know <laughs> yeah. what I mean. But yeah. Then you kind of take the time to to actually like think about it. You're like, oh, no, that's just a that's a cop out. Like, yeah. you know, like yeah. But, but cheers, man. Mate, how good. And obviously you're back now. Um, body's good. Could reunite your reignite your all black crusader career. <laughs> Who knows, mate? No, body's sure. feeling good. You're looking sharp at training. Oh, you make feel good. One thing mate. that a lot of guys like they come on the podcast and then they put it out there and things seem to happen for them. So Mate, like, that's that's why I'm here, Jimmy. Yeah, like, where do you, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Where do you want to go, mate? Timmy's book sales <laughs> through the roof after him. Mate. Cody's eclipse, mate. <laughs> this is where it happens. This is where the magic happens. Mate, Timmy's books, he can't make enough at the moment. <laughs> Sad banana is going oh. through the roof. But And then I guess after footy, like, um, I know you're, what, 34? Um, what, yeah, have, you got, have you got, I know you're not retiring yet, but have you got much of a, idea of what you want to do post footy no like i really don't yeah oh, i don't and it's almost the challenge has been okay with that yeah i think like i don't think many guys do like yeah. i listened to your potty with timmy i thought that was awesome like he's been such a good teammate he's over a wizard, years. Eh? oh man yeah. he's he's a gem yeah like and listen to that even listen to things like that like oh, that's actually really really helpful for, i imagine it would have been helpful for a lot of guys yeah in a similar position to myself um but no i, I, I don't like it I'm very fortunate. I've had a good long career, and I've I've been really smart with what I've earned and and mm. saved really well and invested well. So I've, I'm have the luxury of having time mm. when I do decide to hang them up. I don't know whether I'm just kicking the can down the road a little bit further <laughs> at the moment. Um, but no, I, I'm not too sure, and 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 I think I'm okay with that. Yeah, you that's know, cool. yeah. So, but I guess there's so many things about rugby that I love, mm. like. That would potentially might. Well, I, I'd actually ask you the question: like going from a player to a coach, like what kind of itches does that scratch from gun from being a rugby player to now now coaching? Like, mate, the reverse podcast here. We <laughs> <go>. <laughs> I was actually meaning to ask you yeah, the other day, but it, like, it does. It like it ticks a lot of the boxes. You're getting all the same things um, you yeah. had as a as a player, except. Your body's feeling a bit better. Yeah. <laughs> more meetings, condi- though. The conditioning training is yeah. optional. Yeah. Obviously, you're spending a hell of a lot more time on the computer watching yeah. code. So if you enjoy that, like I reckon, I would recommend it. And you're yeah. obviously someone who's um, very smart, rugby brain. So I feel like if you wanted to go into coaching, um, yeah. well, what's awesome. left of it? Yeah. 
<laughs> do you suffer from it? Like nah, you, you got no symptoms. Nah, nothing at all. Yeah. Nothing at all. like handy. Like yeah, yeah, you're like you've had another test and <laughs> still Einstein. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. Well, anyway, we'll get into some of these questions. Um, oh mate, I hate. Oh, I can't even imagine. Mate, there's a few who's come out of the woodworks. Mate, there's um, this first one. This one's just popped in from Brad Weber, so I do want to read this because it is a, it is a good one. It's about a time where you. Um, <laughs> we're at 2019 World Cup. You stayed at the same um, hotel as Floyd Mayweather, yeah. and they organised <laughs> him to come in and speak. Where you had to interview him, um, and you were so nervous. Palms were sweating, jittery, um, sweating, um, and ended up being um, Sevu who rocked in with his shirt off. So, <laughs> what do you remember about that? <laughs> oh, does he not? Okay, so yeah, so quite often like. ABs would have a club rooms on a Tuesday night, even with the club jersey. Yeah, it'd be like nib- like a, you know, like a rugby club. Yeah, um, I think it was a Wayne Smith initiative. Awesome, awesome yeah. way to decompress on a Tuesday. Um, but I'd often interview guys that would come in. So I remember the Mertz once. He was unreal. Oh, yeah. Like he was one of the best we've had. Like just he's got chat. He's funny. Yeah. Like he doesn't take it serious. Good. Yeah. Um, who else we had? And we had our Willie Apiata. Oh, and yeah. once, wow, that's pretty pretty intense. True. Yeah. Kiwi hero, um, who did Fitzy over in London? Oh yeah, he's different. Oh, is he? He's old school man, <laughs> old school kind of. Yeah, he, he interesting. <laughs> interesting. He? Yeah, I need to take notes for uh, the next what a yeah, lad guess. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mertz right up there, yeah, mate. G- get him on. He would, <laughs> mate. He'd be one of the. He'd be goat, I reckon. Um, and we had, so we had a few like you kind of go somewhere, and I think they had like Adesanya and I think Richie oh, might yeah, have done him yeah, a couple yeah, of, yeah. like last year. Yeah, we were in Tokyo, um, staying at like this ritzy hotel, and we, we'd notice all these bodyguards around, and Mayweather was there. Yeah, and kind of what happened was like, so myself, only three of us, the security guard Bender, <laughs> myself, and someone else might have been Sammy Kane or it might have been Gilbert. I'm not sure, but the few of us were in on it. We're like, okay, we're gonna we're gonna tell the boys that we're getting Mayweather to come in. And so, so oh, so you I were was, in, I on, was it. in on it, oh. but but like. <laughs> So we're going around like I'm acting nervous, like yeah. was what do you want me to ask him? Well, Jeez, you're a good actor, he's coming obviously. At, so full, full webby, full webby straight. But like I was going around like, and then I started to convince myself, what if he does walk in? <laughs> then I am. So maybe so I was kind of acting, but maybe I'd like double bluff myself that he might have been coming in. So I'm actually like you pranked oh, yourself. Yeah, I think I'm <laughs> so I'm actually angry, like, maybe he is. Surely he's not. Surely he's on money made with it. We we can't afford him. Like. So, yeah, so, and everyone's like kind of, and then like, so you see the guy, like, yeah, yeah. ask him this, ask him this. Yeah. He's like, oh, man, no, no, do, you, do you want to interview him? I'm like, no, 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 no. Like, <laughs> no one wanted it. And then um, next thing you know, they like start up some rocky music and Sebu comes in and a dressing <laughs> gown. Like, it, was, it was a good laugh in the boys. So. Got a few of them. Like, obviously got Webby, but um, I must have sold it well, maybe. But What an actor. Yeah. Life after footy. There you go. <laughs> Yeah. Did you meet him though or no? You just saw him from afar. No, he was just kind of. You see him, his bodyguards are massive. Oh, yeah. Big dudes, yeah. And he was just all blinged up. Like, his posse was like, man, like, he had yeah. like 40. Oh, 40 oh, people yeah. just following him around. It was it was quite strange. Right, but it's next level. Mate, he's big in, in, um, in Japan. Like, he's a yeah. pretty, yeah. Well, he's big. Yeah. He? He's <laughs> money made with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think he did like an exhibition fight and it was just like, yeah. hacked out. Yeah. <laughs> Japanese love stuff like that, though. Eh? Yeah. yeah, he's yeah. okay. Good start. Okay, next one. Uh, we oh, you asked that one around. Did, did Webby not want to ask anything about the fantasy <laughs> NRL this season? No, he hasn't. Oh, he's he wouldn't. He wouldn't anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next one. Worst missed tackle of your career. Oh, it won't be many. Did Tom send that in? <laughs> it is Tom's, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, you put me on the toilet. Oh, stuck in the mud. And then he did this. Oh, you'll be able to find the footage. Oh. Yeah, mate, he just done me clean. He was probably one of the hardest guys to tackle. Was he? Him and Gitz. I remember playing Gitz in my Gitz? first Oh, Matt, Gitz. My first oh, game. True. I was like, he's probably like, being like a smaller midfielder, I used to look up to guys like him, Mo Driscoll. Yeah. Yeah. Um, even to arms, like, but I remember I was like, first game against Ghetto, I was like, I'm gonna get him, like, yeah. I'm gonna get him behind the game line here, get him, like, bang, hit spin, he's 20 meters down. True. The field. I'm like, what just happened? Like, yeah, because he's only small, eh, mate? He, yeah. he is, but he was, oh, he was such a good player, right? yeah, he was unreal. So, I remember that, and I also remember, yeah, 
Tom's just far out. Hit, I think he hit spin, offload, like oh. behind the back. Oh, the boys almost still covered for me, but it was just that was pretty bad, miss. You never, you never remember the ones you make, eh? <laughs> you only ever remember the ones you miss. No, well, wait, that's good. You've only got two, so oh. that's pretty good, mate. I've got <laughs> 500 in my head just going through oh, every mate, day. Oh, <laughs> sure there's plenty more. <laughs> okay. Um, best midfielder you played with and why? Oh, great question. Heaps. So many good. Mm. Oh, hard to pick just one. Oh, man. So many good. Oh, I love playing with Jack. Yeah. Love playing with him. Smart. Mm. Smart, just indecisive. Like, my was good to play with. Yeah. It was just energy. Always mm. always up. Played one game with Snakey. That was pretty cool because mm. I always like thought, like I always try to model my game around him because yeah. he was just the, just the so so smart, yeah. so so clinical, and just, just so good. Mm. Um, oh, man. And I love playing with Timmy just because yeah. I got like a real – like a lot of history with him and yeah. a real soft spot for, for him as a mate. So, mm. yeah, hard to... Mate, what a one. four. Yeah. Yeah, good for you, Tim Bateman, Matt Anon and Conrad Smith. Yeah, I hate... I could, go, I could say any of them yeah. guys I play with and I could just talk so highly of any mm. of them, so... Oh, mate, that's cool. Okay, yeah. next one. Will the beard come back? <laughs> it's not enough hair, though, to make the beard come back. No, <laughs> no chance. I'm looking old enough as it is. Check out the wrinkles on this forehead. I'm trying to look younger now, not older. No. <laughs> God. What about the other ones? The bowl cut. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's cu- everything's going to make a comeback, eh? Hey? Maybe. Was, oh. When did you have the bowl cut? I don't remember having a bowl Mate. cut. Was that who's that, who's even said that? Was that Super Rugby? No, nah, that nah. was like high school. Oh, high what school. A filthy like oh, bowl did, cut. Yeah. yeah. Mum told me it was cool. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, Mum knows. S- sad, mate. <laughs> <laughs> it was like you know the undercut. You yeah. Know? Oh yeah. The part. Oh man. Backstreet Boys must have had it. That's maybe why. But, but you are right. Everything does sort of swing around. Like the mullet. Look at the mullet. You only really need one big name to bring back the bowl cut. Mate, never say never. And right? I reckon you're the guy. <laughs> maybe get a bit fit. <laughs> never say never. <laughs> okay. Beard's gone, but bowl cut's back. Okay. What was your nickname in? Got. Oh, it must be Game of Thrones. Is it? Oh, G O T. Is that who is is that Bender or Nug or who was I? I was Jorah. Jorah. Jorah Mormon. Oh, I yeah. was the, the what look alike? Nah, like, well, we all kind of so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. what's Here's the a story? Because <laughs> not a Game of Thrones man, but you're not. Nah. Get on it, man. Oh. Great show. Am I not too late? No, nah. nah, never too never late. Too late. Huh? We um, I died. We're the crew, like uh, ABs, like um. Far out, we'd start, like it started off as a big group, but we just started watching Game of Thrones all together. A few of the guys that hadn't watched oh, it. Yeah. Started off as a big group, but it kind of ended up being myself, Bender, Nuggy, Joe Locke, the media manager. I think it was us. But at the start, there was guys like Nate Harris. Oh, yeah. Nate Harris seemed yeah. to then. <laughs> <laughs> Who was he? He was, was he Hordor? <laughs> oh, no, he had, a, he, had a, he had a doozy. Aaron had the worst. Aaron, Aaron was Joffrey. Bender was Ned Stark. And I was Jora, who's, who's just kind of like the just a battler. Yeah, yeah. Ned, st- Ned was like the good guy, who just got his head cut off. Right? Oh, I won't spoil <laughs> it for you. Sorry, and anyone else that hasn't watched it yet. But it was it was good. It was quite cool. Like things like that. Yeah. And you just kind of we literally watched the whole like I don't know how many seasons, seven or as something. A as a as a group, like right through like kind of tours and True. over nice a couple of seasons. Yeah, love it. Okay, next one. Are you coming back to New Brighton for a run with Phil Burley this season? Is Phil Burley back in town playing? I think he just got back like a couple of days ago. Oh. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna get down and try and play next week. Are you? Yeah. Oh. yeah. Man, the crowd will turn out for that one. The return. <laughs> Remember the box of Cody's down at Brighton. <laughs> It'll be a crowd down there. Not sure what kind of crowd. Um, yeah. yeah, make sure you lock your car, everyone. <laughs> no, I'm. I've always wanted to go back and play. Yeah, I've just always had a contract, and the risk of getting injured playing club rugby, they'll tear your contract up. Yeah, true. Back overseas, and now I've got the um, freedom to be able to. Um, unfortunately, my way with the well, not unfortunately, but me and the girls are going to Hamner this weekend. So, oh yeah, um, I'll get down next week. I think they've got a couple of round robin games left. So, 
Oh, be great to get down. You're going to just be in time for finals. Are they in the finals race? No. I think they're going. I think it's a pretty tight oh, club. Here we comp. Go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Another. Do you you've won I'm a lot in your career. You've never won a club title. Ne- never. This never. Is, oh, nah. Tick it off. Mate, how good would that be? You'll um, be goal kicking and. <laughs> you might have to start. You got, can you take me for some practice, mate? <laughs> That's why I'm coming in. I'll lock you in next, uh, next Tuesday for some extras. <laughs> You reckon we get Fonz to lay some up? <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> oh, what a backline that would be. Okay, next one. Um, do you enjoy contact training? <laughs> oh. Um, this is from your coach who signed you, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Lando. Oh, how yeah, good. Um, yeah, love it. No, the boys rinse me over there. So, like, um, fuck, in Japan, oh, sorry, in Japan, they would have... Um, like G1, 2, 3, and 4, and 4 is like hissing. Mm. And so they go G4, and I was like, nah, hey, games on Saturday, boys. Like, yeah. nah. So, like, quite often I just wouldn't, like, I'd just, like, that smart. tackle. Yeah. Yeah, oh, mate. Oh, no, well, just because it's what you used to hear. Yeah. You guys are smart. Yeah. Like, if, <laughs> even yesterday, I was getting smoked. Like, <laughs> oh, you see, Leslie, I got, like, bruised ribs. He got me good. Um, so, like, yeah, so I was quite surprised yesterday level, but. No, no, no. Um, yeah, it's a lot different in Japan. Yeah. They get like when we, like I said, first started double Tuesday, double Thursday, full contact. It's just like, how are you gonna guys peak on Saturday if you? Yeah. So I would, was trying to, I was trying to show them Saturday is the most important thing, but I was also like, mate, I'm just gonna do what's best for me. Yeah. And I, if I, I'm gonna be able to hiss on Saturday, I don't have to smoke anyone on or myself on Tuesday, Thursday. So. Yeah. A little bit selfish, but Mate, that's thanks. probably why you had no injuries or concussions while you're over there for four years. Because obviously, a lot of it's training. Yeah, a lot of the time is training over there. So yeah, it's they that's train a smart hard. Decision. Yeah. Thanks, mate. Thanks, thanks, folks. <laughs> well, sure, I'll share. I'll share. I'll share it before, mate. And then you <laughs> under the bus. That's nah, good. <laughs> okay, what goes through your head in a close game with a few minutes left? Oh, love to go inside this mind. Oh, it's a good question. Um. Man, it literally, like I keep alluding to Japan, but like some of the the biggest stuff is the mental stuff over there. Like, um, and that was probably one of the things that helped us be successful was just embracing the mental performance side of the game and really running with it. Mm. Um, shout out to John Quinn. Um, <laughs> he owes me a coffee or two. <laughs> could we, <laughs> could we, could we cash you over there? Um, but no, um, oh man, just just trying to stay focused. Trying to really stay focused to whatever I need to do in that moment, and I guess as well as as if you, I guess if you're a leader, then um, then deciding making decisions on what's best for the team. Mm. Um, so yeah, I'll just say being being ruthlessly focused on what I need to do, and and as well as connecting with the people you need to 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 make decisions on what the team needs in in those moments. Mm. <laughs> oh, like that, <laughs> gee, what is that's good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next one. What's the best end of season party you've had? Party. Oh, man. <laughs> end of season do's. Mm, mate, you would have had oh, so right. many in your 20-year oh, career. Oh, man. Maybe. Oh, man. I remember like, I remember one year it was like a, maybe like a, f- like a fourth or fifth Canterbury, so Canterbury Championship. So Nasi Manu made us. Go for four or five days, whatever oh, yeah. the owner was. Compulsory, compulsory team, team. So no one could tap out, and if they tap out, you'd have to go in and get him. Oh, oh wow. was, he was a really he's he's a great team man. Yeah. Nasi, like he was awesome. So maybe one of those, or otherwise it'd be like um, dress ups at, at Carter's. Oh yeah, Dizzy had like one of the best dress up um, costume setups that you could get. So yeah, I remember my brother saying that yeah. they used to always have good Mate. good dress ups there. Right? Yeah, well, that's that's part of that. Um, Half of us now got got enough from those um pizza pasta dinners from a few years ago. Yeah, to, true. To pull out, but um, yeah, like the Dizzy always put on a good though, and he was he was a good kind of social committee leader. Yeah. So have you got a good dress up kit now, mate? Yeah, not you bad. Must, yeah. Not bad. Just just get back on the gram and look at <laughs> yeah, far out two thousand and I think two thousand six, uh, eighteen and nineteen. We started 
going for pizza pasta. I remember seeing them, and oh. you guys used to go to some fair effort, eh? Oh, it got way out of hand. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was another <laughs> level. It got really expensive. You go hire like <laughs> yeah. a, you go hire Jack Sparrow costume from old, uh, that spot down in Cashmere. It could set you back 150 bucks. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so the boys cut it now, which I don't blame them, but never lost the game. Never lost the home game like that. On a dress up. Oh, no. wow. So it must be the dress up, surely. Mate, surely keep the tradition. <laughs> okay. <laughs> two two more. Yeah. Uh any old press cup stories? Old press cup stories. Oh, probably the only thing oh Probably just like how bad the Marlborough referees are. <laughs> Far out. We got and the Tamaru referee. Oh, we got absolutely. Man, we got shafted a couple of years. Oh, you don't forget, eh? <laughs> Bitter or <laughs> Bitter. Yeah. Never the referees. Let it go, fault, Crots. Mate. Let it go. High school rugby. Yeah, oh, Prescott. This is such a cool, such a cool thing. Yeah, such a, like awesome. Um, yeah, I just, just, just remember. Like just going to school with your mates and then playing in the weekend. This is awesome. Um, I think it's like high school rugby and like club rugby are like the real essence of what rugby really is. Mm. You know, that's the, that real humble kind of. I think the, the the yeah. I won't say the higher up you go, you kind of lose it. But I just remember, I just reckon club rugby. Mm. And um, well, everyone's doing it for nothing. Yeah, all doing exactly. Because they love it. Don't yeah, they? So hundred percent. That's exactly. Yeah. That's exactly it. But um. Memories, Mate, besides losing to you boys, like the Huckers or Kuwait, oh, yeah. that's probably a good memory. Like Did the, you ever lead it? You would be. Mate, this is, I'm like close the to whitest, the mate, surely, mate, we always had a, <laughs> we always had some <laughs> yeah, brothers yeah, ready to lead yeah, it. Good like, Yeah. Um, yeah, those, those are probably, that's some cool memories, yeah. Yeah, no, no, good stuff. Okay, last one. Best piece of advice you have for a Waterlad listener? This was what I was most excited about getting on the podcast. Yeah. One bit of advice, yeah. You're a wizard with advice. I don't know. Um, man, just, I'd say, like, I was kind of speaking about it before, but just, like, be, o- be okay with, um, like, be okay with just being yourself. Mm-hmm. Or be okay with, like, however you feel about certain things and, and stuff like that. I don't know if that's really clear, but, like, um, Man, oh, you know, like I, I'm speaking probably because where I'm at in my life right now. Yeah. But I'd say, like in terms of my rugby career, just man, if you want something and you work hard, you're gonna like it'll happen. Mm. Like literally, ha- ha- working hard, being smart, having a plan, like you will get to where you need to go to if if you work hard. Mm. Like, don't make excuses. Just get on with it. Um, and if you want something enough and you work hard enough. It always takes care of itself. Hundred mm, percent. Yeah. When did you make your plan? Like, um, man, I just did you sort of map it out. Like, how much did you map out? Did you map out your whole career? Or no, I just I do it every every year. Every year, every year. Like I'd have like just right. I just write like I mean, you know, how you have your rugby book. Mm. Like I just I'd write down like what what I wanted to achieve that year. Mm. I just remember and then have a pretty lo- like loose plan, mm. but like and um. Like that kind of manifestation stuff that Timmy talks about, eh? Yeah. Um, but yeah, like, like hard work just always takes care of stuff, eh? Yeah. Like literally, it, it does, eh? Yeah. Like, and you know, if you're like going the other way, you know, oh, it's not quite going to pain because I'm, I'm not working hard enough. Like, <laughs> I'm taking a shitload of yeah, shortcuts. Exactly. Yeah. Hundred <laughs> percent. So, and it's just like anything in life, whether it's rugby, mm. relationships, anything. Like, just work hard and and good things happen. So. Mm. Yeah. Mate, what a way to finish one of the great podcasts. Um, absolute legend. Obviously, someone I've followed uh, very closely since my... Um, since he used to beat us at um, <laughs> since high I'm school rugby. All like those <laughs> press cup questions yours. <laughs> yeah. Mate, we hardly ever beat you guys. Like, when you text me and said, I'll oh, we'll start from press cup, I was like, no, no, no. It's just, we'll go from Brighton. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it has been awesome to go through your journey. Um, obviously, incredible career you've had. Um, still going. I'm looking forward to what's next. But um, yeah, absolute pleasure having you on the podcast, mate. You're a true legend. Thank you for having me on, Jimmy. Nice to connect these last couple of uh, weeks. And thank, uh, thanks for the job you're doing here. Yeah, you're, you're killing it, man. So keep it up, mate. Appreciate it. Absolute lad. What a lad. What a lad. What a lad.